Hey guys, welcome back. It's me and Mia. Uh, thank you very much for the support that you guys showed in the last video. Um, I'm really happy for it and I'm really glad that I could be of help. So uh, this video is going to be a bit of a long one, so buckle up. When we're talking about carries for ether raids, we're basically talking about the unit that's going to do most of the work. Uh, as we mentioned in the support video, uh, the usual uh, ether raids team, your usual ether raids off offense team, is going to look like this. There's going to be two uh, seasonal mythics, so either two heirs or two nagas. Um, and then you're going to have a bonus units for the extra 20 points and then you're going to usually have a support unit and a carry unit there are some different setups uh, mainly gale force strats but we, those we're going to go into in a different video um, as far as carries go uh, there's two main uh, there's two main uh, types of carries there is uh, carries that are going to be taking hits, so that is either Omega Tanks or Vantage Sweepers. Vantage Sweepers are going to be uh, covered in a different video because there's a lot of them and they're mostly the same. And then there's Hit and Run Units. Hit and Run Units are usually uh, Cavalry Ranged Units that can snipe something, get danced and pull back. With Omega tanks, you don't usually need a dancer because most of the most of the work that they're gonna do is you're gonna be hitting and turn, and you're gonna be tanking and killing and re retaliation. So with Omega tanks, you usually have a dedicated support. A couple of the tanks that I'm going to show, they need one specific hero as their support. Uh, we're going to go into them. And the others, they can use more generic supports. First up, we have this unit, this guy, uh, Kanagis. Everybody, since he, they've seen him, uh, everybody has been able to tell, yeah, this guy can tank. Uh, he gets plus four into each of his stats when uh, on enemy phase. If he is transformed, he has free distant counter. So that's also really good. Uh, his stats are really well balanced. Um, I'm showcasing him for Astra Week. Most of the tanks I'm going to be showcasing uh, for Astra Week, uh, even though uh, tanking is a little bit harder with the without the rest buff from air, I find that it's still possible. I usually uh, still tank, go for a tank strat even in Astra Weeks, and I don't have too much trouble. Um, I can usually get the golden chair without problem uh, and top 1k is really not that far out of reach. So there's two main builds for Kanegis. Um There's uh, the, Akaris video, uh, the Akaris build that he has popularized that I'm personally not a big fan of. And then there's this other build which is much lower investment. It's basically all the stuff that he comes with as default. So, uh, what's the difference? With this build, we run Svalin Shield, which makes him immune to armor slaying weapons. To be fair, I do not see that many armor slaying weapons, personally. In tier 25, tier 26, I don't really run into too many of them. But since my main tank for Astra Week is uh, Brave Hector, I keep a Kanagis just as backup with Svalin Shield just for tanks that have armor slaying weapons. Special Fighter versus uh, Vengeful Fighter is also something that is, personally, I would consider it up for debate because. With Special Fighter, what's gonna happen is you're going to retaliate and most of the times you don't have enough damage to kill in return. Whereas if you can attack twice, that's going to be much more likely. Um, special Fighters therefore usually needs quick repost and that would also allow you to run Soul which heals you for a much higher amount. Uh, so that is really cool, whereas with this build you could run Distant Defense, you could run Svalin Shield, 
uh, but you just want to get fat noon times with fierce dance uh, of course with every omega tank the the one uh, seal that you could always use is distant defense most of the units that you're going to be tanked are arranged so distant defense will double dip for both defense and resistance but if it's not available there are a few case options which is the ones that i'm currently showcasing so next up brave hector brave hector i find to be really good really strong however i am not personally a massive fan of his melted his usual weapon because we all we care about is defense so we can use some of the defensive options for lances and we have quite a few of them we have uh, what do we have? We have Casablanca, we have Slaying Lance, and we have, of course, Burkett's Lance. Let's move this guy over here. Okay. So, um, the first set is something that I see in my friends list. Um, I'm currently showcasing a low amount of merges because I understand that Brave Hector is kind of hard to run into. He is in the permanent pool, however, he is not super necessary. The example on the left is an example again with Special Fighter and Quick Repose for the for Light Week, and the other example is for Astral Week. I have a third example over here, which is what I currently run. Um, so Austin Counter gives him a distant defense, a distant counter. It gives him a plus attack and plus defense on the enemy face. So uh, most of his stats are going to be much higher than they look. Um, Casablanca uh, is a very viable spear option. What it does is it gives you dull ranged. So any bonuses on the uh, any visible bonuses is it visible or in general? No, I think it's just visible. Visible bonuses on the enemy attacker will be nullified. And you might be thinking, yeah, but if they use if they use visual bonuses, I might as well just use um, panic. To nullify them that is an option however you are not taking into account as we saw last week uh, the effect of for example a brave veronica staff or a uh, legendary azora dance uh, which might give them plus stats after dancing so uh, and those you wouldn't be able to panic so casablanca is a very strong option uh, in the first option, I am running Noontime. You could run Soul. Uh, there is a debate on Reddit on what's best between Noontime and Soul. Basically, the idea is if you can activate it every combat step, you're going to usually want to go with Noontime. So, Special Fighter, Weary Fighter, they gave you, uh, they gave you, they gave you um, the what's it called? Uh, special acceleration so you can use them uh, and uh, so that's pretty much what you're going for for the second build it's actually a one-shot build with bonfire uh, slaying lance plus bonfire allows you to proc bonfire with each retaliation step so you pretty much one-shot everything that you're going to be fighting against since your attack is insanely high and you get the bonus of running special fighter so if your opponents should get danced for any reason which again i find it unlikely this is just a build i found that i copied uh, but they wouldn't be able to uh, proc their ultimate on you uh, for the c slot i forgot to mention it uh, earlier attack smoke is pretty much what you always want to run after after your initial uh, hit that you've tanked you're going to give minus seven attack to uh, enemies within a two square range of your attacker so pretty much everybody on the enemy team after the first hit will have minus seven attack and that's just an all-around great skill it comes in the free-to-play pool i believe it comes from kaze uh who is uh in the three and four star pool so it's really easy to get him uh and it's something that I really find quite compulsory. Next up is the final Brave Hector build. Uh, this is the one I use. 
he is my main tank on uh, Astra. It's exactly what you see. Basically, the cool thing is if I manage to get, uh, for example, uh, he gets in the right week, uh, say it's um, wind season and I get to use um, legendary Hollywood, he gets to uh, 73 defense and 73 resistance something like that maybe a couple points lower but it get it's really insane you're going to say yeah uh, his visible res isn't that high that is true so uh, ophelia will do damage to him with her uh, with her special however most of the times uh, the following attacks they deal zero damage and i get to hit back and heal back and be fine um, to be honest, you don't need the fifth dragon flower with um, with him or with uh, any other armor units. That usually gives speed, and that's not the stat that we need. We retaliate twice, either through quick repost or through vengeful fighter. So speed is just a dump stat. And the units that you're going to have speed checks against are for example uh, legendary all with his uh, null c follow-up which again i don't find to be good but many people run the default set uh, and in that case you're not gonna be winning the speed check anyways because he is a speed demon next up it's the final armor tank uh, i wanted to classify them by movement type because it's something that uh, Armor tanks are often maligned, mostly because the one um, content producer uh, that's really uh, the most popular is Akarius, and since he doesn't like armor units, his words uh, are going to be the most popular, so many people, as a result, they think that armor tanks aren't viable. Personally, I disagree. I really, really disagree. I think they're, pers they're perfectly fine. In this case, we have Aidan, who I feel needs to be played in Light Week, uh, and she is a whale option. She is most definitely not a free-to-play option. She is just a massive bag of stats. She has Dragon Weakness, uh, and many weapons right now tend to get Dragon Weaknesses. Uh, dragon effectiveness uh, there are the Mayogi dagger which have both hardy bearing and dragon effectiveness uh, that's one of the two I can't remember which the other one I think has armor effectiveness um, they're usually just as popular people usually find uh, use the one that they have and you don't really prepare for that and also um, uh, well, uh, one unit that I'm going to cover in the defense video is, for example, Armor Bolt Fighters. Uh, for the massive nukes, they, you get a Guidance Trap in, so they manage to get a Bolt Fighter attack with an ultimate, and those are really strong. So in that case, for example, in the case of Legendary Tiki, uh, Aidan is um, the best choice. However, um, with 55 visible refs before any buffs, and with the fact that if she is debuffed, she nullifies any debuffs and she gets plus 4 into each stat, she is able to tank Ophelia's quite effectively. Again, this is a whale option. I know that many people like Aiden. I don't understand why, but many people I know that they pull to them and they plus 10 her. She is fine in Ether Raids. She is not just a PvE unit. So, yeah, that is an option that you might consider. Next up, it's the only really uh, cavalry tank that I feel is usable, and I actually feel he's quite decent. Uh, a Fallen Burkut has uh, two really unique things. Uh, the, the first thing is his weapon. He gets. Um, he gets a distant counter and he nullifies follow-up attacks, which pretty much frees up his A slot. And his in his A slot, he uh, already comes with Warding Stance, which is with Warding Stance 4, which is really, really good because it gives him plus 8 rests. So it brings him up to 52 resistance with this build, which is really not that high investment. 
and he has guard, which is built into his warding stance 4. His speed is insanely low, he will never double, therefore you have to run noontime on him. Uh, cavalry units get to run drawback, which is something that they can use thanks to their mobility. He can run dull range in his beast lot, since we know that he has high resistance, since we know that he doesn't get uh, he doesn't get countered, he doesn't get double follow-ups. You could run, um, you, as an option, you could run Quick Repost, that is also a seal option, but I really like Dull Range since it nullifies any buffs that the opposing, uh, that the opposing nukers may have. I think he's a really underrated option, I personally don't have him, but I have run lots of calcs with him and I find that he can be really, really quite effective. Um, he is better suited as a light unit because, for two reasons mainly, um, as a uh, as a tank, he doesn't. Um, let's say uh, let's say two things. First of all, he needs high res, and since he is a cavalry unit, his stats aren't that high. The other reason is you sort of don't want to overload yourself on blue units on Astra Season since you already have two uh, Nagas. This goes against what I said since I ran Brave Hector on my um, on my uh, Astra Season tanks. But yeah, there you go. Uh, one thing that I want to mention is as far as support units, we uh, sort of went into them. Uh, the one support unit that I would like for Burkett is Corin, because he uh, just buffs his stats really easily. Uh, in the case of the other two main babysitters, Lucina, Brave Lucina, uh, her buffs don't apply to cavalry units, they only apply to infantry units. And in the case of Caden, Caden, okay, here we go. Caden has the problem that he, uh, if he gets panicked, all his bonuses get nullified. And the preference weapon of Burkut deals 20 damage to, um, to the uh, ally unit within two spaces of Burkut. So basically Caden, he buffs Burkut, he is in range, Burkut takes, takes a hit, Burkut deals 20 damage to Caden, and therefore Caden is at risk of being panicked. So we don't really like that. Um, and especially, uh, this isn't just for the first turn, but for the turns after that, so not the biggest fan of it. Another option would be, for example, Mordecai, but I don't feel that he does enough to support uh, Fallen Burkut. Next up, we are done with the uh, horse tanks and we have uh, Beth Camilla. Beth Camilla basically has the same stats as Air. She comes with Ouch Pouch, which allows her to get Soul in her first retaliation. I personally built her. I was not a big fan of her. Now I'm sort of warming up to her. Uh, here I'm running her with Vantage, yeah I mentioned that Vantage Sweepers should be in another video, but Vantage here is an option uh, to allow her to um, one-shot units before they get back at her. She is sort of a mixed tank, she both heals and does Vantage Sweeping. Um, instead of Vantage you could just run Dull Ranged as we mentioned, or Guard, or... Uh, she doesn't really need quick repose. Her speed is really, really high. Mostly, uh, very often, I find myself doubling on my opponents before they can hit me, uh, or rather, um, be and rather the fact that they I never get hit twice with Brave Camilla. So next up, we have what do we have. Oh yeah, we have dragons. Dragons are another very maligned uh, category. Mostly again due to Akaris and Dragon Gun effectiveness. Yeah, it's more present than armor effectiveness, I feel. Um, however, uh, Fallen Corin is an insane uh, unit. She has a massive bag of stats and she doesn't really need supports because her preference weapon 
gives her up to plus six into each stat if she is alone, if she doesn't have any nearby allies. So this allows her to do very deep uh, smite plays. This allows her to be supported by a Mordecai who will just push her away. Um, and again, this might even allow you to run two tanks and not to run a dedicated support for her. You might just get plus, just give her plus six into each stats with tactics buffs and uh, link skills and just push her into the enemy team and she's fine. Her downside is again that she's a dragon. She's colorless, which doesn't give her any color weaknesses other than against Raven Tomes, Raven Tomes which are kind of rare on defense. Um, she can run Noontime, she should run Soul, um, but the ones of my friend is run Noontime. She can run No Counter Disrupt, this is the first infantry tank that we see. No Counter Disrupt allows you to tank and to retaliate against fire sweep weapons and against staffs. This is good for two reasons. Uh, against staffs, you simply uh, you're going to be affected by the staff's effect. For example, panic and so on, uh, or pain and whatever. Yeah. However, you're going to get the kill on the unit against Brave Veronica. You're going to kill her. And against lunge traps, the lunge effect only works if the um, if the unit that is attacking with lunge survives. So with this kit she is able to retaliate in return and really not get killed, not care too much, not get displaced. I find that she, since she is such a gigantic pile of stats, she needs as many stats that you can get her. So. Uh, Unless you can get high merges on her, I really wouldn't build her if you only got a couple of her in the latest mythic banner. Just save the um, just save sudden panic, just put it onto one of your support units. We saw them in last week's video. There's gonna be other options that I'm going to show you in the future. And again, distant defense because uh, here she is shown in Astro Week, but she doesn't she needs everything she can get really to be able to tank so yeah uh next up is male kana male kana is something that i like to consider mostly because of the fact that he is extremely balanced he can run water breath i believe he comes with water breath which gives him another plus four into each stat also, um, in the case of Fallen Corrin, she can only get plus 5 Dragon Flower, since she is a late gen 3 unit. Uh, in the case of Kana, he can get to plus 10 Dragon Flowers. He can refine War Breath, which gives him plus 3 visible res and plus 4 uh, res in the enemy phase. So we're looking at uh, 55 resistance, plus another 6 from Distant Death. Yeah, he is fairly tanky. Again, he is vulnerable to dragon weaknesses. He can run Moon Tank, he can run Soul, he can run Null Counter Disrupt since he's an infantry unit. And if he is something that you already committed Dragon Flowers into, yeah, he'll do fine. He is also, I believe he's a GHP unit or he may be a Tempest Trials unit. I don't really remember. I don't remember if we're going to get a rerun for him, so uh, there are definitely better options for um, for Heroic Rails projects, but I don't feel that he's too bad. I feel that he is perfectly useful. In fact, I feel that he is a better version of Naui. This is a max investment Naui. Uh, now he still doesn't have a uh, weapon refine, she might get better when she gets one, because she does have a lot of stats for being a gen 1 unit, however I am still not stoked about her. She could run bonus tumbler to get her even more stats, she has access to IVs unlike Mel Kana, uh, so she could run... Um, she could run, for example, the plus speed refine with lightning breath so that she doesn't get doubled as easily and she might in fact double herself with bonus doubler since she get plus 12 into her speed. 
Um, I didn't really mention any uh, Tiki variants. I don't feel that she is fantastic. Um, yes, Fallen Tiki has really high stats, so she is useful in that case. And again, she is a whale option. Um, for her sets, for her set, you really don't need anything special. Just follow the generic armor set that I have shown you, and that's pretty much it. Next up is two, uh, is two more free-to-play units that I feel are actually much more superior to Maui. Two infantry units, and those are going to be Dono and Libra. Uh, for Dono, let me put him over here. Um, Dono and Libra both have really uh, a large amount of options in their weapon, because since they are a generic spear user and the generic axe users, they can, they can really do quite a lot of, of things with their weapon. Dono can run Casablanca, Dono can run um, Burkitt's Lance, or the newer version, which I don't remember what it's called, I think it's Wording Lance which gives him plus 7 a resistance on enemy phase, which is fantastic. They can both run no counter disrupt, they can run guard, in the case of Libra he can run hack or lantern, which has built in guard, in the case of Dono, as we said earlier, Casablanca gives him dull ranged, they could run a quick crude post, in the case of Libra he could run his own uh, he could run Slaying Axe for noon times every round, otherwise he could run Woe Gun, which is his the weapon that he comes with, which allows him to uh, get really fat noon times since he gets the plus 7 true damage effect on them. Libra has really high stats, has really high speed, I'm sorry, which allows him to never get doubled and oftentimes he will be able to double himself. Um, if you build him for speed, you want noontime, otherwise uh, otherwise soul is probably the best option. But both of them, uh, you will find lots of people saying that they are free to play players and they have find great success with either Libra or Donald. So there's a good chance you have lots of them in your barracks, just take a look. If you can get them to plus 10, just farm some feathers from... Uh, from what's it called the the farming mode i don't remember what it's called but the one that you see posted on reddit uh it's fine just find those and yeah those are really viable option both of them next up is a tank that i never see mentioned and i feel that she is insane however she has really high requirements that would be erika erika needs absolutely need cannot be played without a cadence support with cadence support as we said in the last video let's say caden gets plus six into each stat he gives plus six into each stat to erika thanks to his weapon and thanks to erika's weapon she gets another plus six into each stat so she would get plus 12 in combat stats from both sieglind and kitsune fang and also she would get probably plus six visible stats from the link and any sort of tactic skills that you might use so uh you have uh, you see these stats on erika you add plus 18 stats to them and in the case that you don't want to run this then counter you want to go full absolutely full tank you add another six stats from bonus double so you're looking at uh, her stats plus another 24 into each stat she is literally unable to take damage <laughs> she is absolutely insane even though she's a red sword unit and you're like oh uh, there's a hundred red sword infantry units they're all terrible they're all unusable in this case i find that she can actually do quite fine uh I like dull ranged on her just to make sure that you nullify any any visible buffs from her attackers. Otherwise, another option would be whoa. Okay, let's move this one. Why are you over here? Otherwise, this option I am using lull attack speed. 
this is another option you could again run null counter disrupt you can run guard all this stuff lol attack speed is just another minus three attack and speed to your opponent that's just a that's just another play on her stats another way to get her even more stats and yeah in this build i am showcasing her with no counter disrupt she is best suited to light season because her defense is high enough and she could use since she is red and she could get preyed on by Ophelia. You want to get as much resistance on her as possible, but you could try her on. Um, you could try her on Astra Season and let me know. Erika is a free-to-play unit. She's been at the four and three-star pools forever, so it's really easy to find that you have a lot of copies of her. However, as I mentioned. She has a per, she has a uh, preference weapon refine, so that's gonna be two hundred um, two hundred uh, dust to refine it, and she is also going to have a really high expensive, really expensive skill um, skill inheritance options. So those aren't exactly what you could call cheap. So yeah less of a budget option but still very very powerful very very strong next up this is an option for fjorm this is with a few merges fjorm is the first legendary unit to be implemented into the game and it's very likely that you all have lots of copies of her so merge her up uh, she has this encounter on her weapon so she can use the bonus doubler without any worries um, we saw her in the last video this is a way of using her as a tank the really cool thing about fjorm is that she is often a uh, bonus unit so you could run double support for her and again the problem is that since she is a legendary unit you can only run her during water season but i feel that her stats are really well balanced really i really really like her and next up we have this guy <laughs> brave ike has got an insane weapon refine it is fantastic and he does really really well when paired up with brave lucina brave lucina gives him plus three into each stat it, she gives him um she gives him special acceleration which is fantastic this isn't to say that you cannot use Brave Bike again without her, you definitely can, especially with the Aegis set. You could also run, instead of Aegis, you could also run Miracle on him. Uh, but the strongest set for him really is um, either Quick Repost or Null C Disrupt with Aether, since he, she, he comes with a slaying weapon from his uh, preference weapon. He will be able with spe special acceleration and quick repost he will be able to get an either of every combat round which will heal him for a bunch of damage which will do a bunch of damage either is not something that we recommend as a healing special for um, for really any uh, any tank because you really want to be able to heal with every combat round so the lower cooldown of noon time and um, soul is usually preferred however in his special case he gets both special acceleration and uh, quick repost so and he gets hit twice uh, before he is able to retaliate so he will always be able to proc an ether in return HP and resistance seal I actually find that might even be better than distant defense on him since he gets uh, since he already gets percentage reduction on e on both the initial and the secondary hit so visible rest will look will look uh, not as good as just HP on him HP rest provides the provides a better combination of stats than if you were just running resistance or uh, HP seals and he has really high defense so he shouldn't worry about nukers like daggers or brave like too much um, for another unit that can run uh, either every combat round 
we have a uh, legendary Ike. Legendary Ike uh, gets, uh, he has, instead of getting a slaying effect, he has a 4 cooldown ether in his, uh, in his Radiant Ether, which again does a ton of damage, heals him for a lot, and since he can run uh, Warding Breath, since he already comes with a distant counter weapon, he will get more uh, resistance, he will have a special acceleration, and with Special Spiral and Quick Repost, he will be able to proc Radiant Ether to have Radiant Ether ready with each combat step. <coughs> Sorry, he has two issues. Again, he's a Red Sword Infantry, so his resistance will be put to the test by Ophelia, and he doesn't a lot of resistance really he has been uh he has been in the legendary hero pool forever but i don't feel that he is fantastic and you really need a lot of copies of him if you already do he is a perfectly fine option although i feel that he is a necessary tier one he is a close second though next up we have the final uh, unit for Red Sword Infantry. This is exclusively a um, exclusively a whale option, and it would be Owain with his missile team and with he Ether. He basically uh, is uh, he basically is also able to proc Ether every combat. However. I have faced against a win with my own defense, even with even when I was running a lower uh, level fortress, and he personally hasn't really impressed me. But he has really high stats all around. He, uh, well, he looks really cool with full merges and full dragon flowers. But um, I don't know. If you've built him, then yeah, you can try him in light season. Again, red tanks in light season. Otherwise, I wouldn't really put too much eggs into this basket. And also, he is in the 5 star pool, so you can't really snipe him. Next up, another unit that is in the 4 star pool. Oh wow, I showed her without dragon flowers. Uh, Faye is insane! Faye is absolutely crazy! She gets both devotion, which gives her um, both... Um, I believe it gives her a uh, dull ranged effect. I'm not 100% certain, I'm getting confused a little bit since we have so many units to look through. And she can run distant defense 4, she doesn't really need to run close counter. Um, since she comes with really high, uh, with really high defenses all around, really, she doesn't even. I didn't really put the blessing on her to show that she can use in both seasons. Um, she can be used in both seasons, really. Um, since I am here, I'm not showing her with um, a blessing, and I'm not showing her with dragon flowers. Uh, what I'm saying is that she gets bonus stats she her stat pool is going to be really high she needs to prevent special from her opponents so distant defense 4 guard are both viable options and again she doesn't really need to counter uh melees she just needs to tank um, to tank ranged units she will attack twice she will proc soul and she pretty much never dies against ranged threats the problem is that she's been in the five star pool forever and has been removed from the permanent pool right now so there is no way to pull for a fey right now if you have her and you haven't sacrificed her for uh, her fire sweep bow to give her to your brave lin or to your legendary lucina then she is really quite strong, quite strong as an option as a tank, yeah. Next up, what do we have? We have George with Partia. George is another unit that is really defined by his preference weapon. He gets plus four resistance during combat, and if he is against a ranged unit, he gets plus six attack during combat. 
so even with noon times he will be able to fire off really strong noon times which will heal him for a lot um, his resistance isn't perfect so i would prefer running him uh, in light season and again b slot perfectly uh, up to you uh, there's really no use to no reason to prefer one to another finally we have niles niles is uh, a unit that was showcased in uh, akaris's video however i don't personally agree with everything he has said i don't think th that he needs the conditional true damage uh, because it relies on the on your opponent have having more defense than they have resistance and really that's not something that you can prepare for whereas with gracia which is the weapon of let me see which is the weapon of um valentine roy who is in the uh, no, he is a seasonal weapon, but you, if you have pulled one, you basically have dull ranged in a weapon. So he can do just fine, he doesn't really care about buffs. His defense isn't really high, but he's been in the 3 star pool forever, so he is really easy to build up. And finally, this has been showcased in the Akaris video, but I wanted to say myself that I have been swept by this exact Oliver and he is crazy he is ridiculous oh one weapon that I forgot to mention uh, one B skill that I forgot to mention is actually mystic boost mystic boost gives you plus six uh, heals you for six after each round of combat blue egg does basically the same thing when it once it's refined it gives you it heals you for four after each round of combat mystic boost also uh, makes it so that staffs do not deal uh, extra damage they do not deal uh, true uh, damage as if they were regular skill but their damage is reduced by 50 percent and i believe mystic boost also prevents adaptive damage from I don't re remember if it's just from dragons or from all units in general. Uh, I have somebody in my friends list who uses... I actually have two people on my friends list who use a regular Roy since he has quick repost and dragon effectiveness in his weapon. However, I haven't... I really tried to calc uh, his stats and I wasn't really impressed with him. I really wish in game there was the possibility to message each other so that I could ask those players what makes Roy that good for you. Both of them were running Mystic Boost. So uh, they definitely know something that I don't. And finally, uh, these are really the tanks that I would consider tier 1 or tier 1.5. Many other options are available. We mentioned a few of them. Basically, you get distant counter or close counter, you get a tanking weapon, you get noon time if you are slow or if you have special acceleration, otherwise you get soul, uh, you get attack smoke, uh, you, tr you usually try to get distant defense, otherwise there are a few other options as we've seen, uh, but that's pretty much it as far as tanks go. Finally, we I'm going to showcase a couple units that are uh, used for hit and run. Hit and run, it means that you're going to strike once, run away, makes it so, making it so that you don't get hit in return, and then you will do the same thing again and again and again. You don't need a cheerleader, but you would rather run a dancer. With this build of Louise, the cat is doing the cat is throwing stuff off the shelves okay with this build of louise this is the one that akaris is showing i believe he liked louise because she has really high hp so she isn't really affected by tactics room or panic manner so that is really something to consider uh, she usually in a sweeper uh, you want brave bow so that you can do as much damage as possible up front and you don't have to face any damage in return 
you can run Moombo. Um, usually uh, the lowest cooldown special would be the best. The other option would be Glimmer. However, with Brave Weapons, since your hits are smaller, they are affected by defense much more. So, uh, Moombo is usually with Brave Weapons superior to uh, Glimmer. That blow, it pairs up really nicely with Brave Bow. Uh, we already know this build, really. <laughs> we have seen Brave Lin forever. This is just a Brave Lin with more HP. Um, he runs Chill Attack on this. Uh, I already mentioned that I like running Chill Attack on my Air or on my Naga so that they are present in each, my, in each of my teams, really. Savage Blow helps you spread out some damage. Uh, healing Tower might nullify it, but you might snipe the Healing Tower. That is an option. Uh, and Savage Blow really helps you soften up your other opponents for further hits. HP Attacks, again, HP Attack Seal uh, is there to allow you to get 256 HP. You really want to get 5 multiples of 5 plus 1 HP so that you are free from each tier of Panic Manor, Tactics Room and so on. Another option would be, uh, not a brave weapon, but uh, Ophelia is with Dragon Fang. This is a max investment Ophelia, but she is basically, well, we know what she does. She doesn't really need Rally Up Attack. In fact, she would probably prefer a movement assist. But really, what you're going to do is you are going to get a big Dragon Fang or an AoE special off. You're going to... Uh, proc special spiral so you will have it with each round of combat you will snipe a unit dance get away snipe a unit dance get away and make sure that they cannot reach you um, again dancers are really quite the counter if you have dancers on the enemy team they are really uh, quite the foil to uh, to hit and run strategies. I don't really run one too often. I might run one during Astra season, but I per personally am not too big of a fan of it. Uh, Ophelia is something that I see people use a lot, although it goes against what I just said since she has really low HP, so she is going to be affected by Tactics Room and Panic Manor. But she does really high, high amounts of damage. And with Special Spiral, she is able to insta-gib anything, pretty much every round of combat that you initiate on. Next up is to build off Old Reliable. We all know this guy. Reinhardt has a Brave Tome with Dire Thunder. We are all, we are all awaiting for his refine. I personally am going to use him if it gets good. That Blow 4 is really good, Surly Blow is really good, but again, uh, you might use an HP seal to get him 256 HP. Sturdy Blow just makes it so he doesn't get, he doesn't fear retaliation. Again, a chill skill on his B slot, you could use a lull skill, Savage Blow on his C slot, and this next up is a meme build for Reinhardt. This is the quad heart. Do not build this. It's terrible. It's insanely fun because you get to insane amounts of speed. I believe you get plus 6, plus 19 speed. So you would get to 45 speed. Which even then, it's usually enough to double most units. Uh, not all of them. And if you, if you could quad with Dire Thunder, you would be able to proc Dragon Fang or uh, Luna with each round of combat. Again, Lull's attack speed is just a meme skill. Uh, with Lull attack, you wouldn't be hit in return for too much. Uh, Reinhardt has really high defense here. He is shown with an Astra Blessing. However, 31 defense, 31 rest is really quite respectable for a horse nuker. And again, drawback on cavalry units, uh, I feel it's the preferred movement skill since you, it allows you to really, um, to really maneuver your team around much more. 
I hope this video didn't go too long. I am certain that I might have missed a few things. If you feel that you are using a unit that works really well for you, a tank that works really well for you, uh, please let me know. I am really happy to find out about anything that I don't currently know about this game. Um, but really these are the tanks and the uh, new hers that in my experience work the best. All of these I feel are perfectly viable for your teams. Thanks everybody for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!